Hey everybody, this is Siete. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make a healthy pumpkin soup. What you'll need is a small pumpkin. You'll need about a half a cup of Annie's, N-A-I-S-E, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, you will need about a tablespoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, and you will need a heaping tablespoon of molasses. You'll need an onion and at least two cloves of garlic, possibly three, depending on what the final taste of the product is. And so I've already started it, so follow me. Hi, so I'm going to make a pumpkin soup. And I cut up pieces of pumpkin. I like to do it in the oven, kind of like roast the top of the pumpkin to give it that flavor. So I'm filling up and I have another one over here of pumpkin. And because I'm diabetic, let's see, move this up a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Because I'm diabetic, I have to be careful of sugars and all that fun stuff. All right. Well, I want it to get covered, so... And I got some extra here, but I heard raw, raw is good for you. So I'm gonna make that in a salad. All right, first thing I'm gonna grab is some chicken stock. I tried to do the low sodium and no MSG. And I'm just gonna pour it in here. Do the same with this little one I have off to the side. Pumpkin soup's really good for you. Pumpkin is loaded with vitamin A. Loaded with vitamin A, and it's really good for your eyes. Okay. So I purchased some anise. Uh, it is really full of very good vitamins. Helps with high blood pressure. Um, it's a food a diabetic would definitely want to eat. So she's been washed and cut. Um, and I'm going to sprinkle a lot of that. I've got some over there, but I'm going to sprinkle a lot of this on top of the pumpkin. So just a slice about that big. Because this has a flavor of, which I love, licorice. But it cooks out. That's about a half a cup. And I am going to I'm going to sprinkle it in here. I've been making some super <laughs> Some super soups is what I call them. Using some good um, root vegetables, which are going up. Everything's going up. It costs so much to eat healthy. All right. Now I'm going to add some more to that. All right. Another good super food is garlic. And I like to do my garlic this way. And I like to layer my garlic flavors. I do two cloves. So, actually three cloves because at the end when the soup is ready, about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes before it's ready, I'll do this with some garlic in it again because uh, you do lose your flavors after a while. You cook something for a long period of time. And I love the smell of garlic. And now I'm going to put some onions in here. 
So I'm gonna ch I'm gonna chop this onion and add one onion to it. And what I do is I take any seasonings that I use. I use two thirds of the seasonings in the beginning of the recipe so that it cooks slowly with your food. There's a better way to chop these, you know. I know that. This is how I normally chop. But I kind of want longer pieces of onion. So this is how I would normally chop an onion. So I'm going to add these, but I like them long. I don't know why. These are all going to get mashed together like you would a squash. All right, so I got my onion, my garlic, my anise, and now I'm going to start adding some of my seasonings. Um, this is a, this is my recipe, okay? Something that I've done. No one taught it to me. I just googled a bunch of what's really good to eat and healthy to eat for you, you know. Murphy, honey, will you please stop? That's right. I washed that. So, I need a tablespoon. That's a big tablespoon, but... This is molasses. You're going to go for a, like a pumpkin pie soup almost. Now... I use, I cook with honey or molasses, and molasses is really good in anything you do, like a beef stew, a gravy, throw some molasses in it. That's a secret I have. Everybody talks about my soups and stews. All right. And I cut some of these off the anise. The little fuzzies just because they're pretty all right so like i said i'm going to use it two-thirds of the seasoning now and then i'm going to use a third of the season seasonings about 15 minutes before i serve it before it's i'm done cooking it because this gets cooked twice but i like the roasted flavor that you get in the oven so this is mrs dash original you need spices, guys. I just sprinkle the top. Now, here's probably where we differ. I got some, uh, I think I'll use the allspice instead. I have some ground clove, because I like clove, but where is my allspice? There it is, allspice, all right really really easy with the allspice I don't as you can tell let me turn on the light maybe you see better and does that make things better for you it does okay so light you don't need much of that and then I never measure some cinnamon. I like a lot of cinnamon. And again, this flavor will cook down. And real crazy. A little bit of lemon pepper. Not much. Tricks you into the whole salty. And Touch a nutmeg, but not while, not during this because nutmeg again is another one of those spices. until soft and at 350 degrees. Our power went out, so I have to go check what the time is. 
Shush. So it's three o'clock now at 350 degrees. I'm gonna let it cook for an hour and see if it's soft. I'll check it every 20 minutes. All right, without, the li without most of the liquid, first I'm gonna start mashing gently. So I don't wanna ruin my pan, which I won't. So you're gonna cook it until it's tender, and that was exactly one hour, so that was a good guess. sleeves up. There we go. Now we've cut out we've cut out butter out of our diet as much as possible. And that simply smart and all that stuff is so full of additives and uh, they're really bad for your kidneys and liver, which I found that out by talking to my doctor. He said you're better off cutting down your butter and using butter. So, oh, I took it out. There we go. So I've added the juices. I've got my uh, so I'm going to use my emulsifier. Just going to in some corners. So not to get the hot liquid on me. So you're going to go slow. used to cooking around the camera. <laughs> all right, that's all I needed. Now, this is where we would determine what we need for more spices out of the way so that, there we go let's see it's gonna have a lot, lot of no salt that's for sure hmm you need salt actually the flavor is really good I don't need to add anything else to it I can still taste the garlic so I would consider that done And here is the consistency. This is a lot of soup for, for two people. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze up a good portion of the soup into single servings. And I can't get my blood sugar under control because of the fact that I have a reaction to all about diabetes medications right now and insulins like injecting myself with water it's ridiculous so I went from starving myself which I did lose some pounds but now being on insulin I've gained some pounds so if I eat more hearty soups and natural foods like this and try to omit the carbs I'm going to be better off than long so tonight I'm going to grill a burger for Bill, maybe a couple burgers, uh, because not, burgers taste great on the grill. You don't even have to add anything. And when you give up salt, you're giving up a flavor profile, and it's so hard, it's so hard to do that. But this has great flavor. It needs salt. It's not getting salt on my part, but if he wants to put salt on his, he can. This is my pumpkin soup, and you can do the same thing with squash. Um, and I make a hearty chicken rice soup, which I can't wait to show you, but this is tonight's dinner all done and it'll be pretty. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. And there you have it. That was our healthy meal for the today. Um, you don't need a recipe to make a super stew. All you need is a thought in your head. Um, you can always Google what goes good with pumpkin or if you're having certain like issues like say diabetes, then I know beets and any yellow vegetable, leafy green vegetable, anything like that, 
Thank you so much for coming to my kitchen and I hope you enjoyed it. Also, uh, there are many ways that you can make a stew of soup if you don't know how to cook. It's real easy. If you can boil a vegetable, you can cook, you can make a soup. Um, when you eat beets, those beet greens that come with it, chop them up, put it in a soup. Uh, you can buy fresh oregano. You can grow oregano right on your countertop. I mean, just, it's easier way to eat, or at least I'm trying. So, hope you liked it, and uh, more to come. Thank you. Bye-bye.